Yo! Crime time, yeah? Once again, this is crime time. I have a criminology degree. I use it to watch stuff and make content. This is obviously about true crime and sensitive topics. So if you're sensitive to this sort of stuff, I don't know why you're watching still, but most of you are here because you like to watch that stuff because we're all a little morbidly curious. Let's watch this video from Mind of a Criminal called When a 14 year old tries to fake insanity. Sounds like a very interesting one. So let's get it. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood, down our main street. Is she good? No, no she's not. she's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. This is my problem. You were the last, last one with last one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of space in me right now, son. This is Aiden Fucci, a 14-year-old boy from Florida, being questioned by his parents at a police station in 2021. Aiden is being held and questioned under suspicion of murdering his 13-year-old classmate, Tristan Bailey. I'm turning off alerts because it gets really weird with the video commentary, sorry. Something he insists he had no part in. Or muting but alerts. to understand how police came to suspect Aiden was capable of murder, you guys, we must go back to the beginning. It's, it's tough when it's somebody this young because there's a lot of evidence surrounding like why a criminal becomes one due to like early life trauma. And it's hard when it's somebody so young who's in that early life because it's like where, when, when was it then? You know what I mean? It's really, it's really tough. Beginning. Yeah, it's, um, it's tough, man. This stuff's, town, this stuff's hard. John's, I can't imagine Florida. being this parent. Tristan Bailey was just a 13 year old girl attending Patriot Oaks Academy, dealing with all the usual challenges high school brings. I like this guy's voice. She was a dedicated and talented cheerleader, full of enthusiasm, ambition, and determination rarely seen among other kids her age. Her classmate Aiden, however, was a different story. According to those who knew him, Aiden Fucci was an oddball. While his teachers noted that Aiden showed them respect and never outwardly caused trouble, his hatred of authority, arrogance, and know-it-all approach to life was off-putting for his teachers and classmates. Throughout his school life, Aiden would land himself regular suspensions, usually after getting into fights with his classmates. Mm. Well, at first, I didn't know if it was him or his friend that was in ISS and that's why they were in ISS because one was saying the other one said it. But the allegation was that Aiden threatened to throw another student out a window. That's correct. A female student. That's correct. Okay. But outside of school, Aiden was displaying far more red flags. Aiden had an unnatural obsession with murder, frequently discussing the topic with his friends. According to those who knew him, Aiden often talked about his deep desire to feel what it would be like to kill another human being. Yeah, he has said he might be a little. Like, he said like he like his knife. He wanted to like slit somebody's throat, and like he said it'd be satisfying. He's talked about killing people. He's talked about fighting people. I've seen him practice stabbing motions with his knife. Aiden would often talk about how he would murder his hypothetical victims. He suggested that he would take them into a wooded area That's at fucked. night, stab them, leave, and later claim he had nothing to do with the murders. When he talked about killing somebody, he even told Zofi Bowman how he would do it. And what he told her was, I would walk around at night and I would find somebody else walking at night. I would drag them in the woods and I would stab them and then I would pretend like I didn't do it um, so that I could keep killing people. In her sworn testimony, Genius. Aiden's girlfriend confirmed that he had an unnatural obsession with the idea of killing and often claimed to hear voices in his head encouraging him to murder someone. When he wasn't at school, Aiden would always carry a knife, one of two named Picker and Poker. On several occasions, she said Aiden would pretend to stab her or sneak up behind her and hold one of these knives to her throat. Despite the blatant- What? Dude, I- This is the thing I was saying earlier is it's like it- So many people who are criminals have some reason 
some story, some history or thing that they went through that kind of curves their life to the point that that's why they got to this point. It is so hard to wrap the mind around why a 14 year old is like already there, you know, and it's what's even more crazy. And just to clarify, this is not me blaming his family or blaming his friends or anybody else involved for not saying something. It is still baffling that like nothing gets done or that nobody thought to say something, you know, that's what's wild. Like there are so many, so many times that, like already you can see failure after failure after failure by multiple like things to do something about it. And this is this is part of the issue. Part of the issue is that all of these things that should be in place or all of these things that people should say don't happen. And then somebody dies and then something's happened. That's when that's when something gets done is the the system is too punitive when it's too late rather than like proactive and being like, why is a 14 year old sharing fantasies of murder also carrying around two knives also simulating so with his girlfriend at the time like stuff like that it's like how how are we even hearing about this only because he actually has a victim because he just ended up finally doing it because nobody there's nothing to stop that that's part of the issue and red flags on display his girlfriend believed it was nothing more than teenage morbid curiosity she never thought he would go through with it that's going to be Zofie coming on the skateboard towards the house. Who is Zofie? On May 8th, 2021, the her, day before oh, the Mother's Day, Aiden spent the day with his girlfriend and their friend. Is the girlfriend the victim? And Trey. The three spent or the day skateboarding else. around the neighborhood, as they often did. Across town, Tristan was enjoying dinner with her family. Right, that's the victim. When she returned home around midnight, Tristan's older sister saw I her on a video they're not chat saying with a boy the in a baseball girlfriend. cap, who convinced her to come and hang out at Trey's house. After an hour together, Aidan and Tristan left Trey's house. Between 1.24 and 1.45 a.m., Neighborhood surveillance cameras caught them walking toward a cul-de-sac at the end of the street. It was the last time Tristan would be seen alive. Jeez. Aiden took Tristan to a wooded area and stabbed her 114 times, killing her before she could fight for her life. What in the, the murder world, happened precisely bro? as he previously suggested. He took someone into the woods and stabbed them. In his mind, he had committed the perfect crime. Only he didn't. Do you see that he's carrying something in his hands? At 3.27 a.m., Aiden ran back home barefoot, That's crazy. holding his shoes. When he eventually got home, Aiden got to work hiding the evidence in his room, convinced that he had gotten away with murder. The following morning, Mother's Day 2021, Tristan's family made the horrifying discovery that their daughter and sister were missing. After exhausting all options, they contacted the authorities, who put out a missing persons report and began interviewing those who knew her. That list included the last person to see her alive, Aidan. Aiden's testimony to the authorities did not inspire confidence. His timeline didn't add up, seemingly taking two hours to return home in what was, at most, a 30-minute walk. He suggested that Tristan had been hanging around with a 20-something drug dealer, a claim that nobody else backed up. And then, authorities received an email with an attachment. It was a Snapchat screenshot. In the back of the patrol car, Aiden took a selfie with a peace sign, adding a text banner that read, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? His classmates shot back, reminding him that Aiden was the only one who knew what happened. But his sociopathic glee didn't end with huh? just one post, as he openly implied that his victim was alive and staging this whole saga. We're, we're having fun in a f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Tristan, yep. if you f***ing walk out the damn... When you see this in a month... Before police could obtain Aiden's cell phone, a runner discovered... 
Add this one to my list of people getting caught because of cell phone evidence. But the bloodied corpse of Tristan in the woods, the stab wounds visible. Within an hour, police put out a search warrant for Aiden and brought him in for questioning, leaving him in a room with his parents. At this point, it's obvious just how much trouble Aiden is in, but his cold refusal to even acknowledge it is chilling. When reminded that his friend is dead, Aiden fails to see why he should care. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood, down our main street. Is she good? No, no she's not. she's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. This is my problem. You were the he last, was last one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of, it's facing you right now, son. I'm adding that to my list, assuming there'll be more. So I, the second video I'm going to work on for the crime channel is um, cases in which a significant portion of it is solved or found or used against them because of cellular data. So it's a really good one. I already have like way too much stuff, but yeah, this, this is morbid. I mean, like, how do you, how do you, this is what I'm saying though. It's like, how does a 14 year old get to this point? Like what, how does that happen? This is why people are so unfortunately interested in this is it's like, how, 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 how does a 14 year old get here? When we have no consistent research showing any sort of predisposition or chemical in the brain or anything like that, that would predispose anybody to this sort of thing. That's what's amazing is it's like, how, 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 how does that happen? How, how did this kid get to that point so fast, you know? At one point during the encounter, Aiden's parents press him to acknowledge just how serious the situation is. It's the unexplainable. But he can't seem to see it. When they ask if he's scared, Aiden claims he isn't, despite his fidgety hand movements. Are you not scared? Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. Not Aiden's parents continue pressing him for his side of the story, but he remains totally unmoved, offering uh, up vague... Probably narcissism or something. So the thing is, saying that isn't incorrect in the sense that most people who do kill and stuff like that have narcissism like there, there's a difference in narcissistic behavior and is it labeled as a personality disorder i don't remember there, there's a there's a difference there, there's like the personality disorder of narcissism and there's narcissism so there's people who are narcissistic and there's people who have a personality disorder of narcissism so a lot of the time you will see people yeah i mean you not everybody knows this is why i'm not coming after you is because it's hard to really wrap around that concept when they're pretty much called the same thing. The personality disorder is just usually narcissistic personality disorder, right? So narcissism isn't, and this is for the people who are correcting them as well, is, is I don't think everybody understands that dichotomy of narcissistic personality disorder and narcissism. So the person I'm explaining this to already understands. They're, they literally said it themselves. It sounded like I was putting it all in a box. Exactly. So NPD is its own thing as is narcissism. Lots of people who commit killings, especially serial killers and the like, have narcissism. They have narcissistic tendencies, they display narcissism, they act narcissistic. Not the personality disorder though. So not everybody with narcissistic personality disorder is predisposed to this sort of behavior. But you will see in a lot of people, like this kid, lots of narcissism, as we heard, because he's like describing this crime like it's the perfect way to get away with it not only does he explain it to people he says how he's gonna do it he's caught on camera he uses his own knife he's the last person seen with this person by other people he's described exactly what he's done to everybody else he's on his phone making it worse for himself by giving more evidence stuff like that like but he has so much narcissism that he doesn't even think that matters. He thinks this is perfect. And then he hides the evidence, his shoes, and I'm assuming the knife, in his room. The first place they'll look. So 
exactly what this guy said. Mental illness does not equal criminal behavior. It sucks that those two things are, are named so similarly because people get it confused a lot. So nobody, nobody with any sort of personality disorder, stuff like that is predisposed to crime. There's nothing suggesting that just to get that clear. But there are a lot of things pointing towards a criminal, especially like killers having narcissistic tendencies, but not that exact disorder. So he answers through a disinterested mumble and frequently avoiding eye contact. Aiden admits that he kissed Tristan and did more with her, confirming his DNA is on her. And yet through it all, he shows seemingly no recognition of how damning that evidence could be. Extremely. Later on, Aiden is like again asked that. if there's anything that's still being hidden from his parents. While he insists there isn't, he takes the opportunity to try and frame Tristan as the aggressor, implying that she got aggressive with Aiden and prompting him to push her. Knowing the truth, that claim is nothing but sociopathic, and his clear lack of emotion or even apprehension is chilling to see. So I responded by stabbing a hundred plus times, of course. Like what? You don't know what happened to her after you pushed her? Did she say ow or get mad? She said Aiden. She was like, Aiden. I think I pushed her, but. Masterclass, bud. Put him in how to get away with murder. This guy's this guy's great. When his wow. parents finally pressed him for his side of the story, Aiden gave them a slight variant of what he told the police, claiming that Tristan had no intentions of going home that night. According to him, she was looking for someone to go home with and decided to get a ride with her dealer. But his body language is far from convincing, again offering also, the information through also a idiotic. Bored, disinterested mumble. This guy's mentioning stuff about body language, but he's really not saying that that is the main component here. That's what is important to me. When Aiden's parents encouraged their son to say nothing until his attorney arrived, police raided their home. When they entered Aiden's room, they discovered a treasure trove of smoking gun evidence. They found Shocker. an empty knife sheath in his drawer, allegedly poker. Stuffed next to his dresser, they found a pair of wet Nike shoes with blood on them, matching the outfit Aiden wore in the surveillance footage. And stuffed under the dresser, authorities found a blooded t-shirt and a pair of wet blue denim jeans which matched the outfit Aiden wore that day. Fucking genius. But as if that wasn't enough, authorities also found that the drain in the bathroom sink had traces of blood and dirt. And among his belongings, an odd notebook contained drawings of a violent and satanic nature. There what was the no fucking question. world, bro. Authorities quickly arrested Aiden on a charge of second degree murder, Good upping Lord. it to first degree after the extent of Tristan's wounds became clear. Then, out of the blue, Aiden's mother, Crystal, was arrested on a warrant. What? Smith is seen cleaning her son's bloody jeans. When what? officers went into the home, they found a pair of wet jeans in Fucci's bedroom. And as we reported earlier this summer, the jeans and a drain in a bathroom Whoa. tested positive for blood. What a twist. Thanks to a surveillance video within the home, Crystal had been caught. Holy shit, what is happening in this room? Oh my lord, bro. This hurts my brain. I hate this. This makes my head hurt. 
Besides the point. Caught on tape washing Aiden's bloodied blue jeans in the sink. Authorities quickly charged her with tampering with crucial case evidence and advising her- I cannot tell you one object? Yeah, like literally, yeah, like ball and car. Like what is, this looks like one of those fucking fake images. What the fuck? What am I looking at? It looks like a the handle of a shovel, Hot Wheels, a basketball net, the attachment to the basketball net, a moon chair. Like I can't even identify this or this. Like there's a lion thing down here. This is nuts, bro. Wow. He's quickly charged her with tampering with crucial case evidence and advising yep. her son to lie about what he wore the night of the murder. She has oh. pleaded not guilty to both of these allegations. Hmm. In September 2021, Aiden was brought into a room at the Duval County Jail to follow the process of his pre-trial hearing. But everyone viewed his behavior as erratic, if not highly concerning. And why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? From the moment he enters the room, Aiden seems dazed and Fucking confused. Zoom court. What a weird time. But it time. all gets a little more unusual when he begins mumbling about demons taking his soul. Oh my God. Oh, I hate demons. I don't want any demons take my soul. Let me put the. <laughs> look at this fucking. Look at the master class move here. Let me put the phone up to my mouth again just to make sure they hear me. Oh, demon demons. time. <laughs> Bro, what did you learn from the oh, fucking no, Parkland shooter? Demons. What's this guy doing? I don't know. Since investigators found a notebook full of satanic drawings, it's not impossible that Aiden truly believed demons were attacking him. But this is likely Aiden's last ditched effort to secure a way out of prison. Hey. The insanity plea has long been a go-to solution for killers and psychopaths. For no reason! And faking a demonic possession works. No. Except when it doesn't. Aiden would eventually go to trial for his crimes, and the judge declaring that his alleged demonic possession would not be considered. Okay. Quick crash course. There is a weird, weird amount of people, especially criminals, who think faking an insanity plea works. One... It's really fucking hard to fake that. Two, if you were to somehow fake that, you don't not go to jail. You go to a facility like jail where they treat you as if you are insane, in which you will be medicated and treated as such, which is probably worse because they will not treat you well. It is a way less free institution because they are assuming you are inconsolably out of your mind you do not just like waltz back home it is amazing that people think this way it is crazy that people think that somehow like insanity plea means freedom it means you go somewhere worse like actually worse the people working there i guarantee you do not think about your protective rights as a citizen they're like this person is not rational we have to just do what's necessary to keep them in here and give them their help they need but also we're not gonna like haggle with them because they're also criminally declared insane so like it's so stupid i don't know how people think this just like doesn't how, how people think this works but whatever unsurprisingly that seemed to help aiden overcome the demonic attacks he was allegedly suffering beforehand the old, emotionless personality his classmates warned of returned, with Aiden barely reacting to the gruesome details of his crimes. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Oh my god. No scissors in jail, huh? No barber? No jail barber for you, bud? Woo! <sighs> Aiden was seen to be following the Sheesh. orders given to him by his attorney. Barely saying a word, except when he specifically had to. But that doesn't I want to mean his refresh. performance was perfect or polished. At one point, Aiden was caught in camera cut laughing evidence. at something his attorney wrote on a piece of paper, undermining any apology he had made to Tristan's family. But that happiness didn't last long. When Aiden's grandmother took to the stand, the her tearful testimony oh, I thought like I was seemed asleep. to affect Aiden more than any other. As she tearfully confessed that the boy in front of her was not the grandson she had helped raise, Oof. Aiden was genuinely affected 
by the comments. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I still need my mama right. Wow, this is so hard. This marks the only instance in the entire trial that Aiden was shown to exhibit some kind of genuine, non-contrived emotion. That's fucked up. Especially and a like grandma a who was very involved in the raising. It was only because it affected him. Tristan's family's pain had elicited no expression from him for yep. the duration of the trial. But see the way that he responds when his grandmother fears she'll never see him again. And I, I know we're a very large Christian family, and uh, we pray all the time. My God. I just hope you consider it a little bit. And please don't take him out of our lives forever. Uh, Bad news, I lady. I, I've died. Not be able to spend time with him sometime before I go. At this moment, it appears that Hayden had finally realized the scale of the consequences of his actions. But it passed quickly. The judge eventually decided that Aiden's crime, which lacked any motive and was done purely to cause harm to another human, was worthy of life in prison. Yup. And Aiden, unsurprisingly, didn't seem phased by that news whatsoever. Mr. Fucci, having entered a plea of guilty to the crime it's of first degree murder i adjudicate you guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of tristan bailey that's what first degree will get you life in prison because of your age you are eligible for a review of the sentence in 25 years also true despite his public apologies to tristan's family throughout the trial and after aiden doesn't seem to register what the sentence meant in his mind it likely doesn't mean anything he always said he wanted to feel what it would be like to kill, and he achieved that. So, few things to note here. One, life in prison is an easy slam dunk because he's literally admitted to how he is going to kill somebody, and that's the exact murder that played out. So that signifies a uh, first degree premeditation. Premeditated murder is only proven either through a written, like written or recorded evidence or vocalization, which can also be backed up by multiple people uh, claiming like similar stories, right? Which the police wouldn't suggest or ask questions about exactly what they said, because that would be coercing, which would be inadmissible. Still coercion happens, but yeah. The police couldn't ask these multiple eyewitnesses of what Tristan or Aiden, Tristan was the victim, sorry, of what Aiden would say. They can't like suggest what he said because that's coercion. Premeditation is 25 to life. In most cases, you will go to jail for like a minimum of a quarter of your life for, for first degree. And it's usually not the minimum. The severity of the crime and the response in the courtroom is usually what determines the length and due to the brutality and due to his response in the courtroom is obviously how he ends up with life. What the guy said earlier, in which he said there's a possibility of parole in 25 years, that is something in place for minors in the United States. There used to not be something like that. There's a whole documentary about it. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, it's called like growing up in prison or something like that. Uh, basically, laws were passed a long time ago, freaking out over super killers, which was some term thrown around in like the 80s. So they passed a bunch of laws to punish children who kill, um, basically sentencing them to to life in prison no matter what um because they thought if they did it early they would always do it and would have no yeah yeah super killer yeah exactly yeah i think that's the phrase i could be wrong it's tied within the satanic panic from what i remember so basically children would would go to life in prison forever if they did any sort of kill which you know isn't exactly unfair but when you think about rehabilitation and the importance of, of that being present in the criminal justice system like it should be. Um, obviously, a 13-year-old might not know better. Doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah, super predator. That was the name. Thank you. The super predator, predator myth known by its proponents as the super predator theory was a theory in criminology that became popular in the 90s, not the 80s, sorry. In the United States, posting that a small but significant and increasing population of impulsive youth were willing to commit violent crimes without remorse. Um, so this caused a bunch of laws that made it to where like here 
yeah, this is the Wikipedia page. Super Predator Theory, criticized for obvious stuff, but yeah, this is important. American lawmakers seized the idea and implemented tough on crime legislation for juvenile offenders across the country, including life without parole sentences. So if this law still existed, Aiden would have gotten life in prison and not been able to leave because there was this idea in the 90s that like children were being raised who were going to be super predators and they were going to be more predisposed to commit crimes and to kill unremorsely. So lawmakers made these laws to like prepare to please the public out of the scare. I believe the documentary was called Growing Up in Prison. I think that was the one I watched. It's about like, I think of an, a place in Colorado, a Colorado jail with a lot of juvenile offenders who are life in prison without parole because of those laws. I think, uh, I think at the end, it's a lot of them end up like having reviews for their cases because the laws got changed. But yeah, this is a very interesting moment in the criminal justice system, if you're interested. So that's why his case could be reviewed in 25 years, because um, life in prison is 25 years, technically. That's why people get multiple life sentences, whatever. Technically, life in prison is 25 years. That's why he is 25 to life and his case can be reviewed in 25 years because technically his life sentence has like been served, but that doesn't actually free him from prison when he does that. That's just like the expected time frame before they review a case. Just a little fun fact about that sort of law. Had this been in the 90s, he would have not had any sort of parole hearing ever until like now when they flipped it. Is it called life if it's only 25? I think it might actually be like 40 years. I think it might depend on the state as well. So I'm not, you know, I, I study a lot of this shit, but like the, the issue with the system is that like states have varying things for almost everything. So it's hard to really say what's exactly the consensus because like even with the degrees of murder, states have different sentence time frames, you know? So it's hard to say exactly what the exact time frame is. If you're curious, you can look up the federal one. Most states do follow that. Some states who want to be tough on crime for like political appeasement do more. Some do less because they realize that that's like unfair or whatever. Um, it, it really depends on, this, on a, the state laws within America. And that's what makes it so intricate is there's too much overlap and too much difference. Just a fun little tidbit about juvenile law. Fucking disgusting case. This guy is awful. I hope he does not get paroled. Um, he literally stabbed somebody a hundred times. So uh, fuck this kid. I hope he rots.